Hey guys, welcome back to Hike Oregon. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my favorite outdoor apps that I use while I'm hiking and backpacking. If you are new here, welcome to the Hike Oregon family. I make hiking and backpacking vlogs as well as gear reviews and general tips and tricks videos to help you become a more confident hiker and backpacker. If you are interested in videos like that, click that red subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you are notified every time I upload a new video. Okay guys, so I'm actually going to turn my phone around so that when you guys watch this, you don't have all this dead space in the YouTube video. So I am actually Actually going to turn the phone like this so that it encompasses the entire screen okay so as you can see here I have a hiking folder with all of my hiking apps in it and we're going to start off with some basic GPS apps so the first one here is motion X GPS and it's a free GPS app for iPhones only I really wish they would make it for Android because it is a really really great app and I really enjoy it. It is the first GPS app that I started using. My husband introduced me to it because he used it for his motorcycling and his mountain biking and he said that it worked really well so I started using it for hiking and I absolutely love it and I've been using it for about six years now. It has always been pretty accurate with mileage and elevation gain and I actually have a whole video where I reviewed this app specifically. I'm not going to go too much into detail in this video just because you can go watch my entire review video where I go into a lot of detail about all of the specifics and all the things you can do in this app. So this is generally how it shows when you open the app and you can see it has all of my tracks on it. It does only hold 300 tracks. So after 300, you have to delete some, otherwise it won't record your next track. It will say Motion X is full. So as you can see here, it has all of the hikes that I've been on recently in one map, which is fun. If you go to menu, you can see where you uh, record a track if you want to. And then if you go back here to tracks, that's where I have all of the tracks that I have done. You can search specific tracks. So Smith Rock, for example, you can search here. I'm going to turn this back around just because it's easier to see like this. If you have a photo, you can put it there. If you view details, you can put in notes. You see your time that you hiked, your mileage, your elevation gain, and your elevation chart. And the main reason why I use this app is because it's really easy for me to share it with myself and send it to myself on the computer. So I basically just go to share and then I send it to my special email that I have just for tracks. And I can also airdrop it to somebody. If someone asks me for a track, I'm happy to share it with people as well. That's the main reason I use this is because it gives me a nice GPS track that I can then use for my website. Okay, next we will go to Gaia GPS. Gaia is an app that has a free and a paid version. The paid version is $17 for one year and you can download worldwide maps and you can choose different map layers like topo, roadmap, or satellite. I just use the free version just because I only use it for tracking really and it is definitely one of the most accurate GPS tracking apps as far as mileage goes. I have noticed that it does tend to under calculate the elevation gain a bit but the mileage is always absolutely spot on so if you just open it it comes up as a map here again you can see all of the tracks that I have done this one holds more than 300 tracks which is nice and if you are on a hike and you want to start recording you just hit this record button in the upper left hand corner and it'll start tracking your hike 
The cool thing about this is that if you go to your saved hikes, you can actually organize them into folders. So I have them organized as types of hikes. So I have waterfall hikes, like rocky desert hikes, snowshoe trips, forest hikes, rivers, uh, lake hikes, and view hikes. If you, for example, go into my waterfall hikes, then you can go down here and see all of my waterfall hikes, which is really cool because just having a long long list of hikes and having to scroll through those is a big pain when you're looking for a specific hike I mean yes you can search hikes but sometimes people are just like oh what's a great waterfall hike I'll just go into my waterfall folder and look for these now I have only had this app for a little less than a year so I don't have a ton of tracks in here but this is definitely one of my favorite tracking apps so far. Next, let's go to Strava. Strava is just a fun tracking app, mainly used for social purposes. I only use it for the social aspect of it. You can go follow me on Strava. I'm just Hike Oregon on there. And you can see what I hike when in almost real time. So obviously you're not gonna see me hiking as I hike, but you know, that evening I will upload my Strava track. So you can just see what hike I just did. And I always make sure to put notes on there as well. So this this one looks like it won't let me turn sideways so I'm just gonna have it like this just open it look I have like 22 followers on Strava I feel like Strava is used a lot for like biking and running and that kind of thing it's a very nice training tool I just use the free version but the paid version costs five dollars a month and it offers so much more than the free version like heart rate analysis it calculates how many calories you burned it keeps track of all of your hikes whatever you're doing runs and adds up all of your miles and elevation gain on like a handy chart so it definitely does a lot more than the free version I just like I said use it for fun and for the social aspect of it so that you guys can see what hikes I'm doing in real time so if you go to my activities, you can see that I've done zero hikes in the month of March but here are some of my tracks that I've done recently I didn't write notes for these, so let's go to one where I wrote notes. Here we go, Eula Ridge. So you can see that I wrote some notes about the hike and about the trail. So I try to be really good about mentioning trail conditions and stuff like that, just because it is something that people look at in real time. So um, amazing training hike, this forest is stunning. We were a bit shy of the top due to losing the trail in the snow. So you can see, then I post some pictures that I took with my phone so that you can see some of the trail. This is where we lost the trail in the snow. Couldn't see it at all. This is just kind of a fun social app. I really enjoy following people on here and seeing their adventures, just getting more information too. So next, let's talk about this wildflower app. Oregon Wildflower Search is a free wildflower app for the state that I live in, but they have this app for just about every other state in the app store. So if we go to the app store, I'll show you here. This wildflower app exists for just about every state. You can see East Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, Maryland. Like you can literally be in any state and get this app. This app is absolutely incredible. Okay, so basically in here you can look for anything. Let's reset this. It has 38 hundred plants. Let's say you're on a hike and you found a flower and you have no idea what it is. You could also search shrubs, trees, vines, cacti, grasses, and different ferns and mosses too. The beauty of this app is that it works without service, which a lot of wildflower apps, actually ones that you have to pay for, don't work without service, which I think is stupid because you want to know this stuff while you're hiking, I think. I've never take a picture of a flower and say oh I'm gonna look that up later I never look it up later right so it's so fun to look it up while you're hiking so let's say you find a flower and it's yellow so you click flower and you click yellow and then it asks you how many petals it has so let's say it has five petals and you can see up here it starts narrowing it down let's say it is one inch and then leaf structure and then the habitat so let's say it's in the forest 
So look, there's 19 plants and then you click on it and then you have to scroll down and see which one it is that you found. I have only been in a situation once where I could not find the flower that I was looking for. So it is pretty rare that they don't have what I'm looking for in here. And I think the reason why I didn't find what I was looking for in here, because it wasn't actually a flower, it was some other sort of weird fungus that looked like a flower. So I think that's why we couldn't find it. But yeah, you just uh, search in here. And then once you click on it, there's some photos. So you can ap make absolutely sure that it is the flower that you're looking at. Um, get some information about where it grows, different habitat that it grows in, time of year, common names, and then you can see the map on where it grows. It's absolutely fantastic. This app is my favorite outdoor app by far. I think everyone should get it. Like I said, it's free. Download it. Use it on your next hike. Another app that I use constantly is Peak Finder, and it's an amazing app that I use literally on every single hike. I know most of the mountain names and stuff, but as far as like the buttes and the hills and stuff, I don't know all of that. So this is fun to use. It's $4.99, but totally worth the price. So if you open it, it basically shows you where you're at, and then you can zoom in or out, and it'll show you literally the names of all the hills that you are looking at. So when you move your phone, it will move this, right? So if you move your phone over here, it'll move and it'll move with how you move your phone. You can zoom in to get more details. I mean, it literally shows this tiny hill. Oh, I just did an update, but okay. Rattlesnake view, it literally shows this tiny hill, right? It's so awesome. And then what I do usually with this is if I need to know something, I use it while I'm there and then I screenshot this so that I can know the information later when I'm doing my hike write up. So this is an absolutely incredible app move this up or down however you want it shows your location you can take a photo if you want which is crazy it shows when the sunrise and sunset is you can see here sunrise is at 649 sunset 1802 it's just an amazing app highly recommend that everyone get this it's super fun to be on any sort of viewpoint hike and see what is around you the koros app is just my app that i use in conjunction with my gps watch if you want to go see that i have a full video of all of that information i can link right here next let's go to gut hook app this is an app that i paid for when i attempted my through hike of the oregon Pacific Crest Trail section, but it has come in handy numerous times since that hike two years ago. So if I click on Gut Hooks Guide, I can see basically the entire PCT through Oregon. I only paid for the Oregon section, which is $6.99. You can obviously buy different sections of the PCT. You can buy the entire PCT. You can buy different trails. They have a ton of different trails as well. I love the Gut Hook app because it shows obviously the map, it shows the trail, it shows where water is, it shows just a bunch of stuff, notes. Um, trail junctions. I've used this app so many times even when I wasn't necessarily on the trail just for different write-ups or directions or mileages between points. It's just amazing. You can get current trail updates. You know, as you can see here, there's different trail updates. So as soon as June hits, you'll probably start seeing notes for 2020. So many through hikers or section hikers hikers will make sure to update their notes here as far as what the trail is like, if there's snow, how much water there is in the streams and ponds and stuff. So it's a really, really great app if you are hiking the PCT or like I said, any other long distance trail. Gut Hook will have a app for that. As you can see, this is just the Oregon section. They have JMT, they have the Arizona Trail, they have the Pinhoti Trail, Colorado Trail. Like I said, tons of information. Love this app. 
And then the Garmin EarthMe app is my free app that is compatible with my Garmin InReach. So I really only use this app if I need to type a message through the Garmin, which is usually only on backpacking trips. So here we go. It just opens it to my current location. As you can see here, <laughs> These little blue things are all the points where I have sent a message from. Basically, if I were to send a message, I would go here and um, I can just easily type a message, which is really nice. This also has a compass, which is cool. And then it has my history of when I sent different messages through my Garmin. I can also start tracking through here and stuff if I want to, but I don't have the plan that offers a ton of tracking, so I generally don't use that. I can get the weather through here, which costs a little bit, but it's really handy if I have been out for a few days and need to know the weather. And then of course I can do all of my SOS communication through here as well. So if you have a Garmin in reach, I highly recommend that you get this app. It will help you communicate with your loved ones as well as search and rescue if you do hit that SOS button. Thank you so much for watching this video. I would love to hear what some of your favorite outdoor apps are, so make sure to leave that in the comments below. And of course, if you have any video suggestions for me, I would love to hear those as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next adventure.